Altitude illnesses is the topic for this video. Altitude illness occurs because there is a decreased availability of oxygen and this occurs as altitude increases. 8,000 feet, 10,000 feet, very high altitudes. And this essentially involves people like mountain climbers, hikers, skiers. And this of course leads eventually to hypoxemia. There are three types of illnesses involved with altitude. There's AMS, which is acute mountain sickness. There's HACE, which is high altitude cerebral edema. And there's HAPE, which is high altitude pulmonary edema. So first let's talk a little bit about the symptoms. For AMS, you'd have symptoms such as headache, you'd have fatigue, you would have nausea and vomiting, and you would have dizziness. For haste, you'd have encephalopathy, confusion, drowsiness, gait ataxia, and eventually coma. For hape, you'd have severe dyspnea, dry cough, which can later progress to bloody sputum, cyanosis, tachycardia, which is increased heart rate, tachypnea, which is increased respiratory rate, and eventually coma. Diagnosis of these illnesses is really just clinical because you're usually climbing, you're on the mountain, so you can't exactly get all the diagnostic testing done. But if you do have a pulse oximeter handy, you can check the pulse ox pretty quickly and it will show about 40 to 70 percent which is quite low normal is usually greater than 90 and if you did have a chest x-ray of course in HAPE you would see pulmonary edema so let's talk a little bit about the treatment you've got acute mountain sickness you've got high altitude cerebral edema and high altitude pulmonary edema so for acute mountain sickness for HACE and for HAPE the common thread is you have to go down the mountain, descent. And for these two, descent is immediate. For AMS, you can usually manage with fluids, some sort of analgesic for the headache, and you can use a drug known as acetazolamide, or a drug known as dexamethasone. Pace, in addition to going down the mountain, oxygen is also helpful, as is these two drugs as well, acetazolamide and dexamethasone. For HAPE, which is essentially pulmonary edema, oxygen also helps, but you want to give medications that will help the pulmonary edema, and the two most commonly used are nifedipine and a phosphodiesterase inhibitor known as sildenafil. Another phosphodiesterase inhibitor that can be used is Tadalafil. Prevention of altitude illnesses is probably the most important part and the biggest advice to give is slow ascent, meaning when you climb the mountain, do so at a gradual pace. So once you get above about 3,000 meters, which is approximately 10,000 feet, you want to go up at about 500 meters per day, or a little over 1,500 feet per day, and no more than that. And this gives the body the opportunity for acclimatization. In addition, medications that were previously described for treatment can also be used for prevention and those are acetazolamide this helps increase the ventilation or a steroid known as dexamethasone so essentially these two drugs can be used for both prophylaxis and for treatment just want to mention one important point Acetazolamide is contraindicated in patients who have a sulfa allergy. 
So if a patient does have a sulfa allergy, instead of using acetazolamide, use dexamethasone. So let's take a look at a few vignettes. Acute altitude sickness consists of headache, nausea, dizziness, and sleep disturbance. Risk factors include which of the following? Below average physical fitness, fast ascent, age greater than 65, or male sex. Well, remember, one of the ways to prevent altitude illness is slow ascent. So a risk factor would be fast ascent. A 30-year-old male is taking a trip in six weeks to Nepal, including a ride to the top of a mountain of elevation 14,100 feet. He has never been above 5,000 feet prior to this trip and is concerned about developing acute mountain sickness. He is generally healthy and takes no medications, but smokes one pack of cigarettes per day. He is allergic to penicillin. Which of the following is the best option for this patient to reduce his risk of developing AMS? Well, remember, prophylaxis is usually given with acetazolamide or dexamethasone. And of those choices, we are presented with acetazolamide. A 52-year-old male with stable coronary artery disease and controlled hypertension sees you for a routine visit and asks for advice regarding prevention of altitude illness for his upcoming trip to Bhutan to celebrate his anniversary. His medical chart indicates that he had a reaction to a sulfa drug in the past. Which of the following would be most appropriate? So prevention of altitude illness, prophylaxis is given with either acetazolamide or dexamethasone, these two drugs, but he's allergic to sulfa, so acetazolamide is contraindicated in sulfa allergy. So that leaves choice D as the correct option for this patient.